Okay, how's it going everybody? Robert here. Um, first I want to apologize if my voice is a bit scratchy. I'm still getting over the cold I've had for the past like four or five days. Um, today's video is pretty simple. Uh, it's ha uh, what, processor to, what processor to pick out and how to know which one you should get. Um, it's a fairly simple process. Uh, you just want to ask yourself a few questions and we're going to get more into that in a second. Um, as usual guys, uh, if you can, subscribe to the channel, like the video, whatever really helps me out, so I'm slowly growing. Let's get into it though. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go to Newegg. As always, I shop at Newegg. It's the only place I buy my parts from. And right off the bat, when you go to desktop processes, you're going to see AMD and Intel. Now here's where you gotta ask yourself, do you want a better price or do you want a better performance? Plain and simple AMD processors cannot compare to Intel's, but they offer a cheaper price for a good amount of performance. While Intel is more expensive, but it offers um, more performance. Like the highest AMD processor right now is this one right here, the AMD FX 8350. Uh, Vichera 4.0 gigahertz processor. It's um, they're eight core. It's their highest end right now, and it cannot. It might um, I have to, I'd have to look at more benchmarks. But back when the 8120 and 8150 were out, they were only able to keep up with the Core i5 processors, the like the 2500K, and um, I mean you that just gives you a bench uh to look at like. AMD's highest end back about maybe three months ago was at uh, Intel's i5 standard. That's their mid or mid middle line. Um, the i7-3770 would blow this thing out of the water, but then again, it is also like what two hundred dollars more expensive. So the question is, do you want a budget build? If you do, go ahead and uh get yourself an AMD processor so let's go through the AMD first and I'll show you guys how to decide on what um, it's pretty simple uh, if you're gonna be gaming you're gonna need at least a quad a quad core processor none of these dual cores um, will really work I mean yes they will game but come down the line you're gonna be bottlenecking the hell out of your GPU so at least a quad core uh, you can go lower I'm not saying it's mandatory but I recommend it. So all these are dual core, dual core, triple core, triple core. Here's the first quad, the AMD A6. The, their A line of uh, processors, basically all they are are a little bit underclocked processors that come with an onboard graphics. They call it their APU, Advanced Processing Unit. Notice right here it says CPU plus GPU. That means it's the processor and the graphics card in one unit. Now, do these things perform well? They perform all right. Sorry, my phone went off again. Um, obviously, uh, they're not gonna on the graphic end of things. It's not gonna beat a out an actual graphics card. Um, sorry, I was checking my phone. Um, yeah, they're not going to be out a like a legitimate graphics card like a, a HD seventy seven seventy or uh, seventy eight fifty. They're not going to be a plain and simple. They're just added in there so that when you want to get your uh, processor and you don't have you don't have enough for a GPU quite yet, you can get this and you'll be able to do some low end gaming without having to buy a uh, graphics. Um, another plus side to these APUs is since they come with an onboard graphics card, they uh, basically you can cross fire a GPU that you buy, like a separate one that you put in the PCI slot, with the onboard graphics that your uh, processor has. It's kind of a cool thing. Not all of them are compatible, but um, a good number of them are and when you uh, crossfire them you get a decent amount better performance so I guess you could get one of these like um, they have the let's see if we can find it I uh, know that's a Fenium 8 
well basically their highest end right now is called the A10 notice how this is the A8 and it is um, their most powerful APU it's a quad core processor it comes out of the box with like about this 3.6 gigahertz and then it's um I forget what the onboard is but you buy a 7770 and you crossfire it to the A10 and you're gonna get decent performance at a pretty good price I mean you notice how the six only hundred and ten dollars compared to an Intel Core i3 runs about 150 at uh, middle like kind of mid-range i3 and that's just to get you started um, next thing with AMD they have their just regular processors regular processors like the Phenom uh, and the FX series of processors personally my favorite of all their just straight up processors are the FX series um, basically because they give you a good deal of performance sorry uh, they give you a good deal of performance for what you're getting uh, this one's only a hundred dollars and it's a quad core 3.6 gigahertz now if you want a game and you're gonna buy a separate graphics card I would suggest this if you're on a budget a hundred dollars is not bad it's actually really cheap for a processor and it's gonna get the job done you're gonna be able to game and you're not gonna have any problems um, and then of course they have their if we can find it I think it's at the top no let's go over here page two um yeah see here's the a10 5800k you crossfire that bad boy with the 7770 and you'll be set and then they have this processor the AMD FX 8350 this thing is their highest end processor out right now it's clocked at 4 gigahertz it's an 8 core processor I know that sounds like ridiculously beastly I don't know what's up with the ads today I am getting a crap load of ads on Newegg and I don't think it's their website I think it's my browser but um so yeah um this is their highest end processor and I know it sounds like badass because you look at it and you're like well this one has an 8 core um, it's an 8 core architecture compared to Intel's i7 quad the thing with that is that these things they're not as powerful plain and simple and Intel uses a thing called hyper threading which we'll get into more later that provides more um, performance so if you want a budget build AMD is the way to go no doubt but if you want the performance and you're an Intel person you like Intel products you go with their product let's go ahead and move on to the uh, the Intel processors I'm gonna try to keep this video under 10 minutes so we're gonna kind of speed it up um, like I said um, I guess the i3 dual core will work here uh, don't get the Pentium they're okay processors but they're not really geared towards gaming um, okay here look the i3 here, let's go with the tw 3220 it's a dual core but it has hyper threading so that means hyper threading is very simple it basically for every one core it creates two virtual so uh, not two virtual it creates it adds on to it basically it's you got the one physical core and then you get an additional virtual core so this thing has two physicals and two virtual so technically your computer will see it as a quad core processor which will improve performance and you have everything up to the the six core i7 extreme edition right here and this thing is expensive if you guys want a ridiculous um, computer you do not need to get these they are overpriced in my opinion this thing is a six core processor with hyper threading that means it's twelve cores and it kicks ass plain and simple um, there's no reason to double your spending on a extreme edition processor all they are is a little bit overclocked and um, higher wattage meaning you get uh, more power to the CPU but that's what you um, how Intel kinda lines things up hyper threading helps out a lot and I'm not gonna get this video under 10 minutes um, so if you're gaming and you have let's say you have 
two hundred and fifty bucks at most to spend on a processor. What should you get, an AMD or an Intel? Um, plain and simple. If you only have two hundred bucks, that means you're kind of going for a more of a budget system kind of thing. Not necessarily a low end build, but you have two choices. You can either go for the Core i5. Where is it? No, oh, not that one. Not that one. Hmm. Let's go with this one. Um, the Core i5. Let's go with the 3470 Ivy Bridge. Um, it's a quad core, but again, hyper threading means you get eight cores technically. Well, that's how your computer will see it. 200 bucks, you're gonna get a great Intel processor. Um, so then you got to look at the 8350, the AMD FX 8350. It's the same price. <sighs> it's the same price for uh, probably about the same performance, but another ad advantage to getting an AMD over an Intel is um, their their parts are cheaper. Like AMD's processors aren't only the sorry, um, AMD's processors aren't only the cheap thing. It's um, the motherboard they tend to run cheaper on average than Intel motherboards. Like if you get a FX8350 or you get an i5-3470, you could probably find a cheaper motherboard for the 8350 than you could for the Intel Core i5. Um, it's just AMD's products, they're cheaper, they're more budget kind of thing. Intel's provide more performance. Um, if you're spending anywhere between maybe 500 to um, maybe 850 $900, uh, I would go in an AMD build because you're going to get more for your money. If you have the extra money to spend, I always recommend going with the Intel, especially if you have the money for an i i7. Um, if you plain and simple, if you have the money, go for Intel. If you're more on a budget, go for an AMD. And um, if you're gaming, you need at least four cores, plain and simple. Um, unless you're going with an Intel, then you can go with an i3 and uh, do some mid to high range gaming because it has hyper threading. Um, AMD, you need four cores. If you're just going to be doing web browsing, I recommend just getting a dual core Intel or a quad core uh, AMD. I don't like going below a quad core on AMD because once you start getting into the dual core AMDs they get pretty weak and you're gonna experience some stuttering and it's just a bad experience. Um, now the question is um, what processes should you get if you're editing? And it's um, it's simple go with an Intel processor because those uh those um the power really helps out there because editing is not substantially uh it's not really heavy on your computer until you start rendering when you render a video it pushes your processor and des uh and your graphics card and whatnot and um it it really does i mean when i start rendering since i'm running an i3 in my uh lower end build my processor maxes out every time I want to render off of Sony Vegas so go with the higher end processor processor spend the extra money and get yourself something that's gonna do the job right um, the next video I'll probably talk about is SSDs and uh, how to pick out one and whatnot but that's it for today's video guys um, you guys have any questions comments or concerns I know I got a question about a um, a budget AMD build I kind of have a budget AMD build for 850 bucks over on uh, my other video, so check that out. If you really need me to go cheaper, I can. I will show you how to get it to the bare bones minimum to game. Other th other uh, than that, that's it for today, guys. Looks like the video came in at about 15 minutes. Uh, as always, subscribe, like if you enjoyed the video. If not, if it wasn't helpful for you, you don't have to. I'm not uh, going to force it on you. But that's it for today, guys. Hope you have a good day. Robert out.